welcome back to my channel. I'm Raina Scully coming to you from Shizuoka, Japan, the place where I was born, the home of Fujisan, and one of the best inaka or countryside places to live in all of Japan. Obviously, I am biased. So today I have some very country ass things to do. So I thought I would take you along with me and show you what some of my inaka days are like. Our first stop today is the Kesatama egg vending machine. <laughs> Even though it's already November, it is very, very warm in Japan. How many degrees does it say in the car? 25? That's crazy. That's like, what is that? That's like 75 degrees? I reacted a little too much. I just wasn't expecting to see 25. Anyway, now we are on our way to the egg vending machine. And I'm doing air quotes because it's more like a coin locker than it is a vending machine. So in Japanese, jido hanbai ki is what vending machine is, and jido means automatic, hanbai means to sell or vendor, and ki is the kanji for machine, so automatic vending machine. And it does, it is correct, right? Like it's technically an automatic vendor, but it's not really a machine, it's just a coin locker. So this is what the little shack looks like. It says tamago. And you just go inside. And there they are. You can get different sizes and types of eggs. This is a premium one. So this is what it looks like. I guess it's more like a coin-operated vending locker, but these chicken eggs are collected every morning, which is why this place is called Kesatama. I actually know the chicken farm these come from. They're distant relatives on my grandfather's side, and they are as organic or free-range as they get. They're so fresh, in fact, that you can just eat it completely raw, which I know is probably a bit of a turnoff for a lot of Western countries, but if you think about it, real Caesar salad and carbonara are made with fresh raw eggs, so you're probably eating more raw eggs than you think. These nama tamago or raw eggs are perfect for tamago kake gohan, which is when you just plop a raw egg onto a bowl of steamy rice and season it with some soy sauce. It's so simple and delicious and so very Japanese. And next up, we are gonna go polish a huge bag of rice. So we get our rice from one of my family's farms, like a distant relative has a rice farm. So we get like huge 20, 30 kilogram bags of unpolished rice and it is one of my chores to polish them every couple weeks or so because I'm a strong little boy. This is a rather small bag. We're actually at the end of this batch, so I'm just gonna finish this baby up. This is what unpolished rice looks like. It's actually really hard to see, sorry. It's basically just brown rice, but it's not the same type of brown rice that you could just buy in the store. This is straight from the farm, so it is very, very hard and tough and not yummy at all. <laughs> So this is what the rice polishing cubicle looks like. Here is where you decide what level of polishing you'd like. You can actually make it brown rice and then you can actually make it musenmai, which means you don't have to wash it before you cook it. We're gonna go for the rather white horse. And then we use the same bag to place it right under here. And it's gonna come out through here. And now actually, if you go to the back, there is this little, door, this little closet thing you can go into where all of the nuka gets collected. So nuka is the outside that gets polished from the rice. 
You can actually use this to make pickles. My obacha normally makes me grab a bunch of this to make pickles, nukazuke. But she said she didn't need any today because I got too much last time. So we're just gonna leave it here. Bye bye. And next we are heading to the farmer's co-op that is right across the street. This is where you can get fresh vegetables from all the local farms around here and it's significantly cheaper than getting it at the grocery store. Plus all the labels have the farm family's names on them so you know exactly where the vegetables are coming from and I always thought that was so cute. Look at this giant sunny lettuce. It's only 150 yen. That's like a dollar. I always need onions. Nice. That's a lot of ginger for only 100 yen. Yatane. And I saved the most boring for last. We are gonna go do our recycling. So our neighborhood trash schedule does include a recycling schedule, but it's very strict and they only take glass bottles and jars, tin cans, and cardboard. So for plastic bottles or pet bottles, you have to recycle them separately. Thankfully, we have a little recycling box right outside of our Itoyokado, which is just a department store, and you can actually accrue points for it on your Nanako card. Nanako card is just another ugh, card system in Japan where like every cent or every yen is a point, and then if you get enough points, you can get like discounts on stuff. But yeah, I think two pet bottles or maybe three pet bottles equals one point or something like that it's not really worth it but we have quite a lot because we haven't had a chance to go we've been really busy and this this is a lot it's it's pretty embarrassing so here it is since it's in front of a department store i don't want to get into many people's way so we're gonna do this as quickly as possible okay all right Good girl. Are you a good girl? I'm very happy about our successful day. I got all the rice polishing done and I got all the veggies I wanted. We got the eggs. Actually, that's too many eggs. I'm probably gonna bring this to my grandparents' house and give it to them. I'm especially excited about this togarashi bunch or these like peppers. They normally don't have this and I always, always am on the lookout for these. So super happy about that. And of course the rice is all polished so I just have to bring this back to my grandparents' house with the eggs and I think I'll also give them some of the peppers. And I was able to grab all of the oranges from our orange tree. This year was very, very successful. Last year they came out kind of dry and sour and it wasn't very good. This year I used really different and expensive fertilizer and now they're freaking delicious. I was, there's actually like a hundred of these but I gave them out to our neighbors because it's just too many. But yeah, I'm gonna bring these to my grandparents' house with the rice and the togarashi and the eggs, I already said that, okay. But before I head out for the final time today, I'd like to thank Boksu for sponsoring today's video. Boksu is a monthly subscription service that delivers premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings straight to your door. For your first Boksu, you'll receive a Seasons of Japan box that lets you taste all the seasonal flavors that are popular in Japan. And for every month after that, you will receive a themed box just like this one. This is the Prefecture Passion Box. Boksu makes such a perfect and memorable gift for anyone in your life who appreciates Japanese snacks and culture, especially during a time where 
or people aren't able to travel as easily as they would like. And actually, not only would you be gifting them Boksu, which is already awesome, but you'd be gifting them the chance to win free tickets to Japan because Boksu is having a giveaway. If you click the link in my description and use my coupon code RainaScully10, you'll not only receive 10% off your subscription, but you will be automatically entered to win. They'll be picking five lucky winners to win a free set of tickets. Just make sure you are subscribed before December 31st. Check out my link for more info and other methods of entry. もしもし、今暇ですか。オッケー。あの、今日動画撮るために毛さ玉を大量に買ってしまったので、あ、そうなの？あの、十二パックの毛さ玉をじゃあ持ってきます。Alright, they're home and they needed eggs, which is perfect. So let's go. Here's what we're bringing over, and I'm actually going to add a lot of the stuff from Boksu because I can't possibly eat it all. So yeah, this is stuff that I know for sure my Obachan would enjoy. I always share them with her. Okay. ただいま。お米とたまごといろいろ持ってきました。ありがとうございます。はい。てんてん。うん。人懐っこいね。可愛いてんちゃん。何触ってほしいの?てんちゃん。てんちゃん。この人触ってほしいの? <笑> so, I'm going to stay here for a few hours because one of my aunts actually had surgery last week and she just came home today. So I'm going to stick around and help cook some dinner and spend some time with everybody. Then I'm just going to go home to edit a bunch of things that are due this week. So I think this is where I'm going to call it. So thank you so much for watching my little Inaka countryside vlog. It's a very old-fashioned, sleepy, comfy town that I love with my whole heart and I'm glad I got to share some of it with you. A lot of people ask me why I don't move to Tokyo or another city like Osaka and the easiest simplest answer is that I moved back to Japan specifically so I can be with my family but I also just really enjoy being here in the countryside where my hometown is. I lived in LA for far too long and before that we grew up in New Jersey but only like 10 minutes away from New York City and although this country living is not something I'm accustomed to, I'm still getting everything I ever wanted out of it. Sometimes it is mundane, sometimes it's too slow and there are no good Mexican places or good Thai places around me which is heartbreaking but Tokyo is only a 45 minute Shinkansen ride away so it is neither far nor difficult to get there if I'm ever craving the city stimuli. So yeah, I hope this video showed some of the charm of countryside living in Japan. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and let me know in the comments what your hometown is like. Are you in the city or maybe the suburbs or maybe deep in the country? Do you prefer one over the other and why? Thank you again so much for watching. Thank you to Buxu for sponsoring this vlog, and I will see you in my next video. Sanja matta ne!